it's been so long since we just sat down and did a good old favorites video. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little bit longer than usual. We're calling it Stuff We Liked in October, but really this is Stuff We Liked in 2020 thus far. Like, there's stuff on this list that we got for Christmas last year. Yeah, so sit down, get yourself comfortable, maybe grab yourself a nice little drink or a nice little snack. We've got all kinds of stuff on this list. We've got board games. We've got music. We've got electric hairbrushes. There's all kinds of stuff on this list, so let's just jump into it. Now the first thing we want to talk about are these play bulb light bulbs. Basically these connect to an app on your phone via Bluetooth and you can change them to like any color you can imagine. They're so perfect for like mood lighting or we like to put them on and have little listening parties when new albums come out. They've changed our lives. We use them to like brainstorm when we write our videos. They are great. We're obsessed with them. All right, now we've got a couple of board games that we want to tell you about and the first one is Code Names. Now this game isn't new or anything. We discovered it like right before quarantine started and it is so much fun. Basically how it works, you're split into teams and you have to try to get the people on your team to guess a series of words by giving giving them clues. It's a blast. It gets interesting. And one thing we really enjoy about it is there is a version of the game you can play with two people. We've been getting a lot of use out of that in quarantine. The other game we want to talk about is The Chameleon. This is a big potato game and basically we had to ask for it for Christmas after watching Sammy Paul and his friends play it in a YouTube video because it was hilarious. Basically the way the game works, all the players are given a secret word except for one of them, but nobody knows which person doesn't know the secret word and they have to blend in with the rest of them and act like they do there's arguing it gets intense it's so much fun like we've only played it a few times and it's already brought some of the best board game night memories it's so good highly recommend highly this next thing that we want to talk about is a game changer and it is a straightening hairbrush it's from the brand InStyler and it's basically a hairbrush that you plug into the wall and it serves as a straightening iron. So until we got this, we were just using your typical like flat iron to straighten our hair, but we're not very good at using flat irons. Like you can almost see the clamp marks and it's just not very easy, but we've had so much luck with this guy. So much luck. It's so good. It's so quick. Uh, we love it. We can't tell you how much this has improved our lives. When we heard the myth of a straightening hairbrush, we were like, nah, nah. Ain't no way that thing actually works. Guys, it does actually work. I swear by it. Now it would not be a 2020 favorites video without a face mask. So we ordered these from the Amazing Phil merch shop and honestly, they're gorgeous. They're so soft and the design on them is so pretty. But the thing we love the most about these guys is all the proceeds for them go towards helping clean up the ocean. So that's awesome. They are a bit too big for a little baby faces, but we found a life hack to sort that out. Basically, we just kind of bunched the strap together like like this and secure it with a mini paper clip works like a charm. Okay, we've got some music that we'd like to recommend to you and this is probably gonna be the longest part of the video because we got a lot of music to talk about. This first one is not necessarily an album, not necessarily a specific song, just a whole artist in general and that would be Ledley. We've been following her for like five years I think and her music is just so consistently good. Like she's changed her sound a lot over the years and it's all just so good. Yeah, and she's been killing it with the releases this year. Like we've had Nightmare, we've had Summer Lovin', we've had Love Me Like That, and they're all just amazing. This next album we wanna talk about is one that we're actually a little bit late to and that's DNCE's album titled DNCE. And we're a little bit ashamed of this because y'all know we're big Jonas Brothers fans. Y'all know we stan Joe Jonas and we really liked DNCE's first EP. Yeah. Yeah, we gave this album a listen a few years ago, and if we're being honest, we just really didn't connect with it that well, but we came back to it a few months ago, and we're obsessed. It's so good. It's so much fun. It's so fun. It's the type of album you just want to dance to while you're getting ready or while you're cleaning the bathroom. It's so good. Okay, we have to talk about Lauren Aquilina's new single. Swap Places is amazing. And honestly, I hate how much I relate to it. The first time I listened to it, we both just wept. Like the lyrics are so painfully beautiful but also like it's a fun upbeat pop song. Yeah like you think of songs that make you cry and they tend to be like really ballady like mood lowering songs but this one is still so upbeat and so dancey but it's so real and it's so honest and I think that's what we love about Lauren Aquilina's music in general. Agreed. Okay this next thing is probably the thing we're the most obsessed with 
right now. The Vance just put out a new album, it's called Cherry Blossom, and we've had it on repeat every single day since it came out a week ago. Yeah, it's just the perfect blend of like their old music that we all know and love, and then this more refined, mature sound. It's so good. I say that a lot, but it's so it's good. It's so good. Like, don't even ask me to pick a least favorite song. I don't think I can do that. Moving away from music, we gotta tell you about our new blackout curtains, which we got a few months ago, and they've made getting up in the morning so much easier. As you all know, our eyes are very sensitive to light and before we got these curtains, we would wake up in the morning to a room flooded with light and have a headache by the time we even got out of bed and that's just not a good way to start the day. But these curtains have made that so much better. They really help with falling asleep too. It's just so much easier when the room is as dark as possible. So if you struggle with light sensitivity or you've got some other visual impairments going on, we recommend a blackout curtain. They're even helping us out right now by blocking the sun from coming in here as we film and making our white balance go all woo 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 so that's a plus. Now I've got a couple of sodas that we want to share with you and these were both bought by our friend Jeff at one of those international grocery store things and the first one is Iron Brew which I hope I'm saying right but it comes from Scotland. I'm not really sure how I would describe the taste. It's kind of orangey. Yeah kind of metally but like not. Either way it's really nice. The second soda is called Inca Cola and I believe it comes from Peru and again, I really don't know how to describe the flavor. It's definitely based on like a fruit. It's a little bit citrusy. I don't know. Either way, we were obsessed with it. Now there's a good chance that both of the sodas we tried were just manufactured in the US, but if they taste anything like the authentic drinks they were based off of, they're so good. You gotta try them, whether you try the authentic one or some sort of ripoff. We've got some book recommendations for you, so I hope you're ready. And the first is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. This is the sequel to Hank's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. Which we actually talked about in our last favorite video. Yeah, and oh, my god, this book, dude. It changed us. As a sequel, it just did such a good job wrapping up all the loose ends from the first book in the most perfect way. It's such a fun, adventurous story, but it's also very, like, meaningful and applicable to all of us, really. Yeah. Now we have to talk about Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. When Hazel announced that she was writing this book, we were so excited because we know Hazel is a screenwriter, so we already knew she could tell a damn good story, and she did. This book is basically a love story in reverse. It starts at the breakup and moves backwards all the way to when the characters first meet. It's beautiful, it's painful, it's raw, it's honest. It's a little bit gay. It's a little bit gay, which we love. There's just so much to take from it, both in terms of love and life in general. It's a must read, honestly. Got some nail polish we want to talk to you about now. It's actually what we're wearing right now, and it's this guy. It's matte black nail polish from the brand Sinful Colors in the shade Blacklist. This stuff does not do what it says it's going to do, but that's exactly what we love about it. Basically, we'd have never bought matte nail polish because we're shiny people. We like shiny things. Yeah, but someone got us this for Christmas, and we're like, okay, we'll try it out. And it went on shiny. It dries so fast as well, which we really appreciate because being visually impaired, it takes us so damn long to paint our nails, and this has saved so much time. We'll be painting a hand, and by the time we even finish it, the fingers we start with are already dry. It's magical. This nail polish is magical. It's also really durable. Like, y'all know, we're in a pandemic. We're washing our hands all the time, and this stuff is holding on. All right, we've got some TV and movie favorites, starting with Love, Victor. This is a series on Hulu. Right now it's just one season, but hopefully a second season happens, and we love it. Love Love Victor is a spin-off from the movie Love, Simon, and like Love, Simon, it follows the story of a gay, closeted teenage boy as he figures out who he is and comes to terms with his identity. It's really sweet, the characters are really lovable, and there's even some cameos from some of the characters in Love, Simon, so that was really enjoyable. Love, Simon painted a very positive experience of growing up queer, and a lot of people might relate to that, but Love, Victor really counters that. Because of this, they were able to explore a lot more dark, relatable stuff, but they did so in a way that makes it still such a light watch. Overall, it's just a really great show, and the two main characters, Victor and Benji, are so adorable 
people, it's worth watching for their chemistry alone. We recently treated ourselves to a month of Disney Plus and we've got a couple things on there that we'd like to tell you about. The first one is Frozen 2. We love the first Frozen movie. We love it, but we never got to see the sequel until this year and uh, we're late, but we're so glad that we're here. The music in this movie is incredible and the animation, stunning. Breathtaking. The show yourself scene, like the visuals for that are basically what happens in my brain all the time. It's gorgeous. I also feel like Frozen 2 was targeted at a higher age demographic than the first movie. I agree, it didn't feel as much of like a kid's movie. Yeah, they tackled a lot of heavy themes, like mental health was referenced, grief was brought up, and I really feel like that was intentional. But it's also still cute and charming and funny, like we have not stopped saying, Samantha? Since we watched it. And last, but certainly not least, Hamilton the Musical. Hamilton the Musical? Hamilton the Musical. Where do we even begin about Hamilton the Musical? We had high expectations because everybody's hyped it up so much. Yes. And oh my goodness, it did not disappoint. It's amazing! The whole time we were watching it, we were both just blown away by the talent of everybody on the stage. All the songs are just so geniusly written. And so well performed. Oh, so well performed. You know, being visually impaired for one thing and quite broke financially for another, it's so cool that we were able to experience the show from like the best seat in the house with all the camera angles and at quite a reasonable price too. We're so grateful for that. I'm not sure that we would have gotten to experience this show at all if it weren't for this. So if you're one of the few people who hasn't seen Hamilton yet, wake up. It's time to stop sleeping on it. It's amazing. We're so obsessed with it. Well, there we have it. Those are just some of our favorite things from the past year, but honestly, there's a lot more where those came from. This video could have been like six hours long if we let it. It really could have, but we really hope you liked this video, and if you check out any of the things we talked about, or maybe you already know about them, let us know what you think of them down in the comments. And feel free to share some of your favorite things with us down there too, because we'd love to hear about them. Yeah, any favorite books, movies, food, anything like that. We want to know about it. Please give this video a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it, and if you're new, you can subscribe, ding our bell, to find out when we post new videos. Thank you if you already have. And if you want to follow along with our favorites in real time, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all these things. And if you want to help support our channel even further, then you can check out our Patreon. We hope you're doing well, hope you're taking care of yourself the best you can, and we hope you know how deeply you're loved, and we'll see you soon. Bye!